Day 46. I punched a man 27 times in the face for jaywalking. Hashtag vengeance. Oh, hi there. I was just writing in my emo journal. Uh, today on Virtual Production Insider, we are breaking down the virtual production of... Welcome to Virtual Production Insider. I'm your host, David Stapp. And have you seen the Batman? Seven million. No, not that Batman, the other one. No, not that one, the other one. I feel like you're doing this on purpose. I'm vengeance. Yes, that one. This is arguably one of the best Batman movies ever, and it is definitely one of the most cinematic comic book movies ever made. And I was pleasantly surprised to learn that this movie used virtual production in several key scenes. So today we are going to look at not just how they used virtual production, but more importantly, why they used it and how they were able to use it to their advantage. So the first thing they used virtual production for was creating a virtual Gotham City that could easily extend certain scenes without having to use green screens or shoot on location. This was done for the skyscraper rooftop scene, Carmine Falcone's hideout, the scene where Batman is rescuing civilians after the flooding, and the cemetery scene. So let's start by analyzing the rooftop scene. This scene alone is an excellent case study of knowing the strengths of in-camera visual effects and how to play into them. Did you notice how the floor in this scene is wet? In the film business, we call this a wet down, and this is giving us reflections, which is one of the best ways to sell the illusion of ICV effects. And all of the light in the scene is primarily being provided by the LED wall because it's sunset and the characters can be silhouettes. So let's take this one step further and analyze this scene in our studio simulator. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is an Unreal Engine environment that I've created to help people really visualize how in-camera visual effects works on these big LED wall stages. So if we fly around here, you can see that I've set up just kind of this mock LED wall that has a simulated wall and ceiling up at the top. And we've got some crew and personnel out here on the floor. We've got a camera operator on an elevated stage. We've got some stage operators on the VAD side of things, which stands for Virtual Art Department. And so this is just to give people a reference of what a typical stage will look like. Now, there's obviously going to be way more people, way more you know, hardware on set. This is just a simple way to help visualize this, right? So let's start with, you know, if we're looking at the rooftop scene in the Batman, we've obviously got this little simulated environment here. But let me hop over to that map to show you what's happening here. So if we hop over to Gotham here, this is a very, very simple environment I set up in like 15 minutes. It's just one big mesh that I was able to find on Sketchfab. Shout out to the artist. I will put a link to this asset on Sketchfab that you can go purchase yourself. It's a really great background building asset. Uh, I wouldn't exactly use this as a hero asset, but it's a great example of how you could easily use this for silhouettes and city skylines in the background of your scene. So I just took this asset and I just duplicated it a ton and I just kind of gave variation to the scale and the rotation and obviously location so that we could quickly, you know, immerse our environment. And this is a great example of how easy it is to previs shots in Unreal Engine. I was able to throw this together in a matter of minutes and emulate the lighting, the placement of the characters. And so that way you can really have your shots planned out on a very technical level before you even show up on set. So we're back here in our virtual studio, and now I want to bring in that set with our characters on it. We turn that on, and now you get an idea of what this really would have looked like. Now, obviously, this is not to scale at all. It's just for demonstrative purposes, but this is what it feels like to be on a set. You've got this large wall providing all this light on our characters, and this really is what you'd be seeing from outside of the volume. So the Batman, they used a very, very large, wide LED wall that wrapped completely around the set. This really does free you up to look any direction on set, 
but that has to be taken into consideration during the virtual art department phase of creating these environments. Because if you were to create an environment and it doesn't have anything over here, that's gonna be a problem and now you're gonna have to fix that on set. So communication is key. You definitely wanna know, okay, what is gonna be seen, what angles, and you know how much of the environment do we need to fill out with virtual assets? Now for Falcone's hideout, they used a bit of 2D trickery. In the behind the scenes, we see what appears to be a two dimensional plate of cars driving on a bridge that is being projected in front of a city skyline. This was clearly very well thought out because they knew you would only see the bridge through the main window in the scene, meaning less of the virtual environment needs to be rendered. So this is a great example of how important pre-production is so that you can know as an artist where to focus your time and effort. You're leaving. Jesus. Now for the cemetery scene, they actually used the geometry of the physical set to their advantage. Because one of the biggest things you have to consider with in-camera visual effects is how to hide the seam of the bottom of the LED wall. The easiest way to do this is to build an elevated set that's higher than the bottom of the wall, but the Batman took it a step further and had a concrete wall that was going across the entire back of the set. Then all they had to do was fill out the foreground and the LED wall could do the rest. And this is another scene where the LED wall provides the majority of the light in the scene, especially since they had an LED ceiling that perfectly emulated the overcast sky. So now let's talk about car process shots. This is one area of virtual production that has seen the highest adoption rate because it allows you to easily film scenes with moving vehicles with a lot less red tape and way more safety. And the Batman has some of the best car process shots using an LED wall that I've ever seen. The car chase between Batman and the Penguin is a great example of this. Because of virtual production, we are able to see our main actors up close in these dangerous scenarios, and they were even able to have rain hitting the cars for added immersion. This allows us as the audience to focus on the actor's performance and not be distracted by something like green screen or CGI. So what are the biggest takeaways and advantages for all this? Well, for one, they were able to achieve realistic immersive lighting on the actors. Then they were able to minimize set builds and filming on location, and they were also able to capture the main actors in dangerous looking scenarios while under safe working conditions. These are all major advantages to virtual production, especially when time, money, and safety are always a factor. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video, and I'm really excited to do more deep dives like this into other film and TV shows that use virtual production. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe, and hey, if you know of a TV show or movie that uses virtual production that we should do a breakdown of, leave it in the comments below. And if this is your first time checking out the channel, welcome. We're glad you're here. We're dedicated to bringing awareness to virtual production and building up a community where others can collaborate. And that's why we created the Virtual Production Insider Discord server. You can check that out using the link in the description below. It's a place where you can come and ask questions, collaborate, and even get feedback from your peers. As always, I'm David Stapp with Virtual Production Insider, and we'll see you next time.